In this lesson, we are going to study integrals and its application. We will be discussing the following. Let's look at this first example. So let us evaluate the integral of the absolute value of 4x minus 1. Uh, the absolute value of a function is either equal to the expression or its negative. So what we need to do first is to split it up so that we can remove the absolute value. The absolute value of 4x minus 1 is equal to itself if the expression inside is greater than or equal to 0 and it's equal to its negative if the expression inside is less than 0. This now becomes x is greater than or equal to 1 fourth. And this becomes x is less than 1 fourth. So therefore, if we now look at the interval in which we are evaluating from 0 to 2, and then here this is 1 fourth, this is where the absolute value um, changes its sign. So from 0 to 1 fourth, the value is 1 minus 4x, but when it is greater than or equal to 4, it is now equal to 4x minus 1. And therefore, we now split our integral 0 to 1 fourth, 1 minus 4x, and then plus from 1 fourth to 2, the value of the absolute value of 4x minus 1 is 4x minus 1. And then we can now integrate it. The integral of 1 minus 4x is x minus 2x squared from 0 to 1 fourth. And then 2x squared minus x from 1 fourth. To 2. Let us evaluate the first expression. So let's substitute 1 fourth. So this is 1 fourth minus 2 times 1 over 16. And then when x equals 0, everything is 0. And then here, let us substitute x equals 2. So that's 2 times 2 squared minus 2 minus let us substitute when x is equal to 1 fourth, so 2 times 1 over 16 minus 1 fourth. When we simplify this, we now get that this is equal to 25 over 4. Next, let us evaluate this one. 2 raised to secant of square root of x, square root of x, cotangent of square root of x times cosine of square root of x. Now, this looks... Um, complicated. However, if we look at the form, it and, and when we use substitution, the form will now be easier. Now, notice here that I have secant. This is an this is an exponent, and those are our usual candidates for our u. So for this one, I will let my u be equal to secant of square root of x and then I have to make sure that its derivative is, can already be found in our integrand. So my du derivative of secant is secant square root of x tangent of square root of x times the derivative of square root of x. Do not forget that we are using the chain rule. So we have two functions here, secant and square root of x. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent and then the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x and then I have my dx over here. Now I want to make sure that this is already waiting in my integrand but Look at this one. We have cotangent square root of x, cosine square root of x, and then square root of x in the denominator. Let me just copy this. I still have my 2 raised to secant of square root of x. I still have my square root of x here. And then 1 over cotangent square root of x. That is what we want. Tangent of square root of x. And this expression, 1 over cosine square root of x is 
secant of square root of x and then I still have my dx over there. Alright, now so when we now substitute everything using our u, the expression now becomes 2 secant, 2 raised to secant of square root of x is my 2 to the u. And this thing, tangent square root of x, secant of x, dx over square root of x, what is that? From here it's 2 du, right? This one over here, that is 2 du. That's 2 du. And then my original, 2 square root of x, that is my 2 to the u. I can now put my 2 outside. So this is 2 to the u. What is the integral of 2 to the u? That is equal to 2 to the u over ln of 2. And then I still have my c. And then do not forget to substitute. So this is 2 times 2 to the secant of square root of x over ln of 2 plus c. And since I have the same base for 2, what can I do with the exponents? I can simply add them. So I can also write this as 2 to the secant of square root of x plus 1 over ln of 2 plus c. Next, let us look at this expression. Um, first, what I will do is, since I only have one term in the denominator, I will distribute this so that I can separate this expression. I will end up with two terms. So this is such x, hyperbolic secant, and then hyperbolic tangent, all over cosh x. And then plus 6 inch x over cosh x. I will integrate it term by term. Okay, but what is sinh x over cosh x? That is 6 integral of tanh x. And what is the integral of tanh x? That is ln of cosh x. And then I will now focus on my first term over here. I will first write this as such x. I will put it in the denominator. It will now be cosh squared x. What we need to do is to integrate this one. I still have my dx over here. Now, since I have a tanh x inside my square root, so that will be my candidate for u. So let u be equal to tanh x. The derivative is such squared x dx, but that is exactly this one, dx over cosh squared x. So that means that that is your du. And therefore, let me just write this whole thing as star. So my star is now equal to integral of u to the one half and then du. Therefore, this one here is equal to u to the three halves over three halves plus c. Then let's bring back the x. My u is tanh x raised to 3 halves over 3. So for the final answer, let me call this one. Let's say that this is the original expression. I will just have to add my 6 ln of cosh x and then plus our constant c. Technically speaking, these two c's are different. c1 here and c2 here, but when you add two constants, you still you just have another constant. Next, let us 
evaluate this one, what will be our candidate for u here? A good u here would be ln of x, right? Because I already have 1 over x dx here. This is already waiting for me. My 1 over x dx. My du here is 1 over x dx. Now take note that since this is a definite integral, when I use substitution, I will also make everything in terms of u. This one is dx, so this means x equals e to the 1 half, x equals e to the 3 halves. But I want to make everything in terms of u, so I also need to do that here. So when x is equal to e to the 1 half, what will be our u there? My u will be equal to ln of, I will just substitute, e to the 1 half, and therefore that's equal to 1 half. And similarly, when x is equal to e to the 3 halves, then u is equal to 3 halves. So I will now write everything in terms of u. So when x equals e to the 1 half, u is 1 half. So it's here. The e to the 3 halves here becomes 3 halves. And then my 1 over x dx is my du over square root of, this is 2u, minus u squared. What is our strategy whenever you have a quadratic here and then there is no linear here? The strategy is completing the square. So I will first write this as so this is negative of u u squared minus 2u to complete the square i will add 1 here but since this means i introduce negative 1 so i have to add plus 1 here and therefore we have so this is square root of 1 minus u minus 1 squared and what is that recall that if you have integral of square root of a squared minus w squared what is that that is sine inverse of w over a and therefore our expression is equal to sine inverse of u minus 1 and then we evaluate it from 1 half to 3 halves so therefore this is sine inverse 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half and then sine inverse of 1 half minus 1 so that's negative 1 half what is that angle whose sine is equal to 1 half? That is pi over 6. And this one is negative pi over 6. So therefore, the answer is pi over 3.